tell much more about David. I'll let him come up and introduce his family. But he's been in the States uh, for about seven years, right? And he is from Kenya. So let's welcome David Wangaka up to share with us today. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, church. Good morning. Whoa, that's awesome. I like that. Uh, so actually, in Kenya, uh, where I come from, we speak a language called Swahili. And I, I just wanted to teach you a little bit of Swahili. Is that okay? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So whenever we go to church in the morning, uh, we greet our brothers and sisters in Christ by saying, praise the Lord. And then they say, amen. Amen means let it be so. But we say that in Swahili. So I will say that in Swahili, and you will just say Amina. Amina is Amen, okay? Amina. So if I say Buana Sifu, you just say Amen. But I want to hear that Amen, you know, with, with enthusiasm, okay? So Buana Sifu, Amen. Amen, Amen. Thank you so much. <laughs> All that means is like praise the Lord, Amen. Um, so yeah, I, I, I'm so thankful for the leadership of this church uh, for allowing me to be here. It's such a great honor. For, for them to give me the platform to talk about what God has done in my life through the, compa the, the program of Compassion International and even just fellowship with you this morning. Um, so, and, and I'm so thankful for the, for the pastor uh, because he was able to, to, to pronounce my last name. Uh, not so, many <laughs> so many people call me Wakanda. And uh, <laughs> it's Wangaka. <laughs> and I don't speak Wakanda language. There is no Wakanda language. That's a different thing. Because <laughs> people are always like, oh, you're from Kenya, Africa? Oh, can you teach me Wakanda? I'm like, no, there is no Wakanda language. It's fictional. Ah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, thank you so much. I'm so grateful to be here this morning. What a blessing. Um, so I grew up and I was born and grew up in Kenya. Uh, I was born and raised there. I have two brothers and two sisters who are older. I'm the youngest uh, in a family of five. And when I was growing up, we, my family and I, we grew up in what we, it's extreme poverty. Um, my mom used to work in a small restaurant where she would only make probably, a month she would make about $30 every month which would translate to about one dollar every day. So she would use that $30, 25 of that she would use that to pay for the rent. So you can imagine her priority and, uh, and, and, and what she chose to do was to pay for the rent. We used to live in a small shanty shack house. It was made of corrugated material, about 12 by 12 square feet house. Uh, and I remember it was so small that some of the dishes that we had had to be put on top of the roof because it, 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 it couldn't fit. Um, we didn't even have blankets, we didn't have beds, but my mom had been given some kind of curtains that she used to, uh, to partition it, to separate the bedrooms and just some places where she, can sleep, she could sleep and the boy and the, and, the, and, the, and the kids could sleep on the other side. There was a small area where we used it as a, as a, as a living room and a small kitchen. Uh, they, we didn't have running water. Uh, you know, we slept on the ground. Actually, it was a, we, we slept on cardboard. So my mom went to a, to, to, to a store somewhere and borrowed some, 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 some cot, uh, cartons uh, that she used as a cardboard for us to sleep. That's how extreme it was for us growing up. But in, 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 in my spirit, God has really given me so much grace that I knew somehow God still loved us. You know, I, I was so emotional when singing the song, He loved us, oh, how he loves us, because he does. Sometimes it doesn't matter how much you, what you're going through. Sometimes some of the things that you may be going, going through, even here in the United States, because I've lived in both countries, I've lived in extreme poor countries and also here in the United States, but I know we also have our issues here. That, but, but we always need to remember to give it to God. Uh, we, we, need, we really need to remember to 
um, to recognize God as our helper, as our as our as our everything. It doesn't matter if we can afford to take care of our problems, but I think what God wants for us is as long as you are called by him and as long as you claim and proclaim him as as the as the father and the king and that and that you are leader and your God, we really need as United States citizens to let God take control of our lives. Amen. That's the biggest problem that we have is we take control of things so much that we, do, we, we forget to recognize God. Um, I remember living in extreme poverty and I had no choice but trust in God. So I was blessed enough to only trust in God. But here in the United States, we are so blessed that we don't need to trust in Him. <coughs> Amen? Like, we don't need to trust in Him. We have health insurance. We have everything. We have nice cars. We have nice homes. We don't trust in God. And, 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 and that's what I've, 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 I've come to realize. And, and God has really been really speaking in my heart. And he's been like, talk about this, because at least you, you understand what I'm talking about. And, and honestly, I, I don't really talk about it, because sometimes I'm like, I don't want to offend people. But I, it will reach a point where God is like still pushing me. Hey, talk to my people about these things. Let, let, let people trust in me. Let's go back to that. Yes, we can forget about everything we have and just trust in God. Amen. I remember when, uh, when, when, when we were living in extreme poverty, my brothers and, son, and, and my sisters and I, we didn't even have food. Most of the food that we got, we would go to a, a, a small city where there, was a, where there was a huge dump site. And we would take sticks, some sticks, and just dig for food. We would look for something that's clean, something we can eat to survive. Our, 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 our responsibility was to just try to survive for the day. So we would find something we could eat. So this dump site was dump site for everything in the whole, in the whole city. Hospital, uh, bandages, blood, food from other restaurants, whatever, leftovers, anything. But we would just try to find something cleaner we could, we could eat. And I, and I saw some kids getting sick to an extent of like losing their lives. Some of my friends. Um, I, I remember one of my friends, I saw him being uh, taken to hospital and the mom was just carrying him to, to, to hospital and, and, and he didn't make it because he ate something and we ate together. But I was so lucky enough to survive from that. Uh, and I remember sometimes I, I would live in that fear so that's the kind of places we would get food from. That, the picture you see on the screen. That's just like live, real picture. And I lived somewhere over there on those small, uh, small houses over there. And if you could see, there are other families that were living in the same, same, same life. But God, the, the Bible says that you will live to proclaim the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And I believe that God made me survive so that one day I can encourage someone. Amen? Amen. So that today I can be here in this family, the family of God, my brothers and sisters, and encourage them and, 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 and we fellowship and worship him together. Um, my mom one day came home and she was very sick. Um, I didn't realize that my mom had been sick. My, she, she had been sick for a long time, but she did not talk about it. She wanted to remain uh, positive and, 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 and uh, she wanted to be a hope for us. And so she stayed like almost a whole month and she did not go to hospital because also she could not afford to pay for the treatment. Because by those days you had to, produce, um, uh, you know, some, some way of, like, evidence that you will be able to pay for treatment if you are admitted to hospital. And so she, a friend of hers, took her to a clinic, and she told her, you know, I think it's time for you to see a doctor. And she went to hospital. She risked it. 
So she got to the hospital uh, or the, the clinic or small clinic uh, in the village. And uh, unfortunately, she stayed there for so long without them admitting her into the, in, into the hospital for treatment. And um, the next day, the neighbor came back, the friend, my, my mom's friend. And uh, she was alone. And uh, by that time, I was nine years old, and I could tell there was something wrong. And she didn't know how to give us the news. The, my mom did not make it. She, she died while waiting to be admitted, while sitting uh, in a, some kind of a reception. Um, that's how extreme poverty was. And that's when I lost all hope, because in the midst of the hopelessness, it even, made, even got more worse. And I was like, oh, yes, I want to continue trusting in this God, but it doesn't seem like this God exists. But God still existed. God still had great plans for us to give us hope and a future. It got to worse so that we can continue even trusting in him in a way that we don't have anything else. Amen? Yeah. And sometimes it, it gets to that in our lives where we really need to get to a point where it doesn't even have to get to that. Like you just can continue trusting and having hope in God. Let's let let's 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 let it um my message today is like and I feel like God has really encouraged me to talk about this of late. Like, let's, let's, let's let him take control. Uh, it's reached a point where I'm like, why can't we just trust in him? Why can't we just let him take control of everything? And that's what we had to do as kids, nine years old. Uh, I started living in the street, different neighbors, different friends. And I remember sometimes I, I would go and... Um, try to find food to different neighbors or families. And sometimes they would close their door on me because we had done that so much that we were somehow a burden to them. And um, they could not let us in. They would close their door on us. But um, one time I remember God sent someone, a good Samaritan. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I don't know where that guy is. His name is Ken. Kenneth. Ken used to work for Compassion. He, he was a uh, Compassion staff. And uh, I didn't know about Compassion. He saw me in the street. And uh, he asked me, hey, young man, what are you doing here? Would you like to go to school and that kind of stuff? What's, what's, what's your story? I talked to him about who I was and that kind of stuff. And he, he was like, would you, would you like to come to me? to my church. So I, I, I was like, absolutely. So he took me to church. So we go to church, and there was like about 300 to 400 children in that church. There were so many children. I didn't understand what was going on. They were so happy. I had not seen that kind of happiness before. They were just enjoying life, you know? And he gave me some clothes. He gave me some new clothes. He gave me some shoes. And uh, he took a picture of me, and uh, he told me, just go play. Let's go have fun. So I started playing soccer. Uh, I, I didn't realize that actually that was, uh, it, it was the church, the, the Compassion partners with churches, but Compassion does not advertise itself. So it is such an awesome organization that you will never ever, when you go to visit, a pastor will tell you, whatever he, where, where he went to visit, there was no Compassion name. It's just the name of the church. And so it was just the name of the church. So all I knew was church. And uh, I remember like receiving a Bible. They gave me a Bible. The first thing they did, they gave, they gave me a Bible, a, 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 an age-appropriate Bible that I could read. I started reading the Bible. I started memorizing the Bible verses every time I would come there. And then something special happened. One day I received a letter. I received a letter from a family uh, in uh, South Wales. Uh, in the United, United Kingdom. This family was a very humble family. They didn't have a lot of money, but they decided to pick a packet of information of a, of a young boy. Uh, and they, they decided to sponsor that child. That was me. 
in a, in a, in a, in a packet of information like this. And they, they wrote me a letter. They said, hey, David, um, we love you so much. That was the first time that I ever heard someone say they loved me. Because I lived, I lived previously I had lived in a, in a place where there was no love. Everyone was surviving. Everyone, even my mom could not say those words because she didn't really want to be very intimate and sentimental. She just wanted us to, to be strong, to survive. But this family was like, we love you and we thank God for you and we have the opportunity to, to be, for you to be part of our family. They told me, we have a picture of you. There's a picture that was taken when I was registered in that program. Uh, when I was given some new clothes, one thing about Compassion International, what they do, they protect the dignity of children. I've seen on news and so many other organizations where they will take a picture of a child who is almost looking like they are dead, so that they make it, you feel sorry for them to give them money. Compassion does not do that. Compassion partners with Christians, uh, brothers and sisters, Christ followers. They don't need to do that because they know, you know, that this is what God wants us to do. Amen? Amen. And so that's, that's one thing I really appreciate about compassion. If I would have ever found that compassion took a picture of me with some tattered clothes and some dirty clothes, I wouldn't even talk about compassion. Because I would be like, man, you guys manipulated me. Amen? Amen? But they did not. They took some nice photo. They sent it. Someone who saw this beautiful, handsome, good-looking ah. young man. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> you know, and they picked that child, not because that child was wearing some, some, some dirty clothes. Actually, my sponsor told me that we have a picture of you on our refrigerator. I actually did not know what the refrigerator was, but I was, I was glad it was somewhere. Um, so my, one of the compassion staff was able to explain to me, oh, a refrigerator is when they open, they open the refrigerator to get some food and stuff, and they see you, they pray for you. And uh, it was so good to know that I'm known, loved, and connected somehow. And I'm what? I'm not worthless. And I started working hard. I started working hard. I would come to this church every single week. And that, then they, they, they actually had the opportunity uh, through Compassion International. They took me back to school. I started going back to school because I had already dropped out of school when my mom died because she could not, she could not afford. I started going back to school. Um, and I remember one time being the first person in my whole family both from my mom's side and my dad's side, <coughs> graduating from college. Amen? Yeah. It, it was such a big deal because no one had ever graduated from high school, live alone college. And I went all through, and I did my Master's of Business Administration and MBA. Amen? Oh, and, yes. uh, you know, right now, my wife and I, we, uh, we, have, we, have, we, we operate businesses. I live in... Uh, uh, in, uh, in Central Valley, uh, around Bakersfield and Fresno. We, we, we own uh, a Dutch bro coffee. Have you heard of Dutch bro? Yeah. Oh, yeah, man. Yes. I own two of those. I, I employ 250 people here in the wow. United States. Wow. Amen. And this is a kid that was a homeless kid in extreme poverty. But someone, someone decided to, 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 to accept and to honor God by saying, yes, yes, let, let, let me do this. Someone just decided, my sponsor who picked this bracket, I've had two sponsors when, while I was growing up because, you know, the Bible says, I mean, uh, African saying, it says like, it takes a village to raise a child. This happens through compassion. Sometimes you may pick one of these children, you sponsor them, at some point you are not able to. Someone else will pick that child from you because it's the work of the Lord. And um, when I was going to college, someone else picked up this bracket again and decided, okay, let me, you brought this boy up to this point, I will take care of this boy until he, he gets his, into his dreams. I've always wanted to be a business person. I've always wanted to 
to encourage someone. I wanted to, I've always wanted to employ people. I've always wanted to coach and encourage people through my stories. And actually that's what God did. God made that dream come true, just somehow. And um, right now my wife and I, that's what we do. I also work for Compassion. I decided to give back to the same organization that helped me uh, to be where I am today. Um, so what, what, what happens through Compassion is that um, in, in the book of uh, Matthew, uh, Matthew, Matthew, Matthew 28, 19, it says, Therefore go make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I'm with you always to the very end of the, of the age. This is a very famous verse. And one, about, one thing I learned about this verse is that it's a command. The Lord is just commanding us as his children. He's commanding us, go ye into the world and make disciples. But when you think about it, not everyone will be able to get into a plane and go to another country and, 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 and make disciples. No. But compassion has come up with a way of like, when you sponsor a child, whoever sponsored me the first time, they were making disciples of, of all nations. They, they would not have, won, had, have had the opportunity to come over there to make me a disciple, but they actually made a disciple. Because now I'm here, I survived, I made it. My whole family, the whole, it's called uh, the, 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 the cycle of poverty was broken. Amen? Amen. They, yeah, they broke that cycle of poverty. And poverty, there is spiritual poverty. That's the biggest. Actually, when I gave my life to Christ, that's when, my, that's when poverty was broken in my life. And they, they, they were able to break the, the, the spiritual poverty, the social poverty, because I was able to get an education to get kind of exposed to different things, and, um, and also economic poverty and physical poverty that I did, not, I did not have to worry about, what if I get sick today, what happens? That person who provided $38 every month for me and encouraged me through letters, that's what they were doing, without even knowing that they were actually fulfilling the great commission of God, Matthew 28, 19. I read something the other day. Um, I'm a learner. I love learning and reading things. And I came, something, I came across something. Let me share this with you real quick. Um, this is from, it's a study that was done by uh, Dali J.M. and Batson uh, from Jerusalem to Jericho. It, it was a study, a study of uh, situational and dispositional variable uh, about behavior, and they were they wanted to learn about the uh, the Great Commission, the, the the Good Samaritan study. So they did a, a, a study about Good Samaritan stuff, and this is what they do. They did. Um, so they had some kind of uh, they wanted to learn. Would Christians who learn about Good Samaritan are, are they more? Can they be more of helpful to other people than non-Christians? And so they studied missionary students who were doing, who were going to school to become missionaries, and uh, this is what they found. Uh, ironically, they found that a person who was in in hurry. In, uh, is le less likely to help people even if he's going to speak on the parable of the Good Samaritan. So what they did was um, they, 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 they sent these students to go into another class but on their way they had uh, someone who was acting as uh, homeless or poor and they wanted to see this student from this point to that point, will they stop to help them? Yet this student were actually going to study about being a good Samaritan. But they found that like only 40% of the people stood and helped this person. The others were just in a hurry and they went and yet that was the test. And sometimes, 
in our Christian life, sometimes we think about when we think about everything that God has commanded us to do, even the Good Samaritan, even the go here into the world and make disciples, we sometimes think that, no, that is not me. It is him, it is her, it is that. We don't think about ourselves. We don't think about God is telling us to do this. God is giving us a command to do this. So my children, um, sometimes what I do with them is that uh, I want them sometimes to when they play, when they wake up in the morning and they play, I want them to clean their house, their, their room and clean all, up all the toys. I'm sorry, please don't uh, uh, report me to social worker. <laughs> I'm trying to make uh, become responsible <laughs> people. So I want them to clean up their toys whenever they play. So I give them a command, I tell them, so whenever you take all the toys, please make put them back to the or the containers, so your mom does not have to do it, or myself. And they do that. But what they do, they actually do the act. They take the action of actually taking them and doing what I told them to do. They don't repeat after me. As Christians and the children of God, that's what we've become. We repeat after what God is telling us. We memorize the Bible but we don't do it. We know so much about the Bible. We know everything about the Bible. We know about this God, but sometimes we don't obey him. It's like, ah, I know he's, he said that, but I don't really believe that's what he means. No. Whenever he tells us something, that's what he wants. That's what he wants us to obey him. He wants us to do that. And so when he says, go ye into the world and make disciples of all nations, um, Sometimes by sponsoring a child or doing other things, you are making that. You are, you are fulfilling what the Lord wants. And so today, we also have an opportunity even today um, <coughs> to make a disciple of all nations. We have some children that we brought here, a packet of information, just like my, my, my sponsor. And I, 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 I had the privilege and honor of meeting this beautiful lady who took me through out college. Uh, she is uh, 72 years old today. She never had children, and I, I never had parents, and so God connected us. I just wanted to show that, yeah, that's, that's her. Aww. She lives, yes, she lives in Oregon. I really love her. Uh, she's been there, she's my mom. She's been there even when my boy, my, my children are born. She always comes to visit. Yeah, and, and uh, she had Lyme disease, and uh, she did not have a lot. She was trying to, Lyme disease is, is, is not, it's not, um, it's not insured. So she, whenever she would go to hospital, she would pay cash. And, uh, but she would always make sure that she has something left for me to go to school, for me to feel protected and, and loved. She would sacrifice for that. I didn't know this about, uh, until recently. Uh, how she afforded to be able to to be to, to, to protect me and uh, and uh, to support me, and it's such a blessing. I also wanted to introduce my family through the program of Compassion International. I was able to um, to, to 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 meet someone, uh, a very beautiful girl, and and she accepted my proposal. Her name is Chandel. Um, I took her on a date once, and uh, at some point I asked her if she could marry me, and she accepted. <laughs> and after that, we were blessed with three beautiful boys. Those are boys, by the way. Um, I know they have huge hairs and stuff. Um, so, yeah, she, and uh, so the, the oldest, the oldest is Shalom. Shalom is six years old, he's almost seven. The young, the, the middle one is Amani, and the last one, of course, baby David. David's such a nice name. Um, <laughs> David, over there. <laughs> so, Shalom and Amani means peace. But these guys, they are not peaceful. At all. <laughs> so, don't be deceived and think that they are so peaceful. No, they are not. So if you want, if you want to invite me next time I come, I, I'll visit some of you and I'll visit the person. You need a huge backyard. 
<laughs> like for them to run around and do whatever. I don't really have a big bag yet, but they would really appreciate that. But anyway, it's a blessing. I thank God because of uh, going through the program of Compassion International, I, you know, and, and, and accepting Christ in my life. I kind of learned how to love. I learned how to cherish a family. In as much as I did not have a stable family, that's, that's, a, that's a dream that I, I have always had. And God was able to fulfill that. So today, is my, my story is not just to make you sad or whatever. It's just a celebration of what you, you would do if you accept today to, uh, sorry, to, to, to sponsor a child. It's $38 every month. The $38 goes into health care. It goes into uh, spiritual nourishment. And... Um, most of the money goes to the child. I, I'm, I'm a witness of that. More than 80% goes into helping that child. So we have some children that we have here today. And the other day I sponsored one more child because I was holding a child when I was speaking in a church. And then I realized, I, I put that child back in the, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the table. And then... That child kept looking at me. No one was picking him. So I started, I decided to pick him, took him home. And uh, I told my wife, hey, could we pray about sponsoring this child? And she's like, she told me, did you say you want to pray about it? I was like, yeah. Like, she's like, no, just sponsor the child. I mean, <laughs> why are you praying about it? <laughs> so um, I, I, I would like for you to pray about it. But if you really feel like this is what God wants you to do, Please, don't even do this out of obligation. Let's take all those kids and sponsor them tonight, today. Why not? I mean, like, why not? I don't want to, like, move you through emotions and sentiments and stuff. No, just through my story of what God has done in my life, through that beautiful lady over there, 72 years old. Why can't we not, not do it? Amen. Let's just do it. Amen? Amen. Amen? Amen. Let's do it today. Amen. Glory to Jesus. Thank you so much. Yeah. So God bless you so much. I'm so grateful to be here. I love your community and I love this church. So God bless you so much. Yeah.